Alan Rold, and welcome back to another episode of More Than Kurosawa. And this week we're going to be looking at the film Exiled by Johnny Toe, a director who kind of continued the Hong Kong action movies of the 90s efforts of a director like John Woo, but also made a wide range of different types of movies, and even within the crime movies, made interesting kind of genre-bending uh, combinations. But if you're new to the series, what I do every single week is take a look at a different great Asian movie directed by a different director every single week. The videos essentially are split into two parts. The first part uh, discussing why I wanted to talk about the filmmaker because we cover a new great filmmaker, Asian filmmaker, every single week. And then that second half of the video, more of a discussion of the film, why I think it's representative of the director's career, but also because these are a little bit more obscure directors that are more than Kurosawa or some of the more popular ones that maybe you've heard of, these are always a great opportunity to start with their career. So if you haven't seen the movies of Johnny Toe, I recommend Exile as a, a good entry point and then exploring from there. That's what all these videos ultimately want to do is, is highlight great Asian filmmakers and, and great Asian cinema to help us understand that kind of wide world uh, of Asian cinema, that there's more than Akira Kurosawa or Bong Joon-ho or some of the more famous Asian directors. You have a hundred year history of great movies and all different types of movies. And you're going to see that here today with Exiled. But you guys have been showing a lot of support for these videos. I, as always, really appreciate that. So if you've seen this uh, movie before, if you've seen the movies of Johnny Toe, feel free to comment below. Let me know your thoughts. I know in particular someone like Johnny Toe has a lot of movies on Tubi and things like that. So he's one of the more easily accessible filmmakers that uh, we've covered so far. So if you haven't seen his movies, definitely do check them out. They are a lot of fun. But without further ado, let's jump into the uh, first part of this video, just discussing why I wanted to cover Johnny Toe and what makes him interesting uh, as a filmmaker. And I wanted to cover Toe because we've only covered one other Hong Kong filmmaker in uh, Stephen Chow, but particularly in, the, in this kind of 90s, late 2000s period, Hong Kong cinema was kind of the face of international Asian cinema. That's where a lot of the great movies were coming out from. And because the series is called More Than Kurosawa, we want to cover a little bit more slightly obscure filmmakers. So we didn't cover John Woo, who, you know, uh, invented, really kind of helped popularize the Hong Kong action movie, uh, continuing off of something like, a, let's say, a Jackie Chan in the 80s. But in the 90s, you had Hard Boiled and The Killer. But then, and that's where kind of Hong Kong action got a lot of appreciation in that 90s period. But then you get a filmmaker like John Woo, who goes away from uh, Hong Kong cinema and joins the ranks of Hollywood and does, you know, Face Off and uh, um, Broken Arrow and Mission Impossible 2 and, and goes onto that career path. But then you have a filmmaker like Johnny Cho who kind of uh, continues that legacy of, of John Woo making kind of action movies and crime movies in particular in the kind of 90s and 2000s. Now, if you've seen the works of Johnny Cho, I haven't seen all of them, but a, a lot of them. He does more than just crime movies. He'll do sports movies. He'll do musicals. He actually is secretly kind of um, wide-ranging in his genres. But I think he's still most known for his kind of crime action type movies. That being said, like I mentioned at the top, they're all kind of spins on different things. So Exiled is kind of a crime movie, but it's a Western crime. Election is more of a drama crime. Drug War is kind of like an action crime movie. You know, there's all these different kinds of variations of... Uh, a certain type of movie, all within the, that kind of crime action-y type uh, genre. So I felt like this was interesting because we can cover another Hong Kong filmmaker, but then also we can kind of cover another great filmmaker like a John Woo who didn't really go to Hollywood and continued making those, those action movies and really kind of helped keep that genre of Hong Kong action alive into the 90s and into the 2000s kind of that's where I see his prime period being that mission, election, exile, throw down, breaking news kind of a, a, a stretch there into the you know, Sparrow 2007. That kind of eight, nine year run, he continually made kind of great movie after great movie. And we're going to be covering one of them um, later today here in uh, uh, Exiled. So speaking of Toe, what makes him interesting? Why did I want to cover him as a filmmaker? Um, the first one, the first thing that kind of comes to mind is some of his stylistic flourishes. For the most part, he, unlike some like a, a Stephen Chow, a Hong Kong, another Hong Kong filmmaker that we've covered, he's not as stylish as uh, Stephen Chow. He's a little bit more realistic, but he does do certain techniques that I think bring an entertainment value to a lot of um, Toho's movies. 
in particular a moving camera. It's not always a whip, ca uh, whip pan type of a camera or a really obvious shaky cam, but the camera is almost always moving in the scenes. He doesn't like a still camera. It's almost always gliding. Even in scenes of you know men across tables talking, like a movie like Election or Election 2 mostly is, you'll have like a slow dolly around a character or maybe a slow push in. And what that technique does is really add to the momentum and the energy of the movie. It makes a movie like Election, which is mostly men in rooms talking, kind of doing business behind the scenes, it makes it seem a lot more exciting and almost like an action movie than it really is. In the same way you could think of a movie like Oppenheimer. That's a movie that's kind of constantly cutting and moving from one place to another, but also has this kind of slow push in gliding camera that I think adds to the pace of a movie like Oppenheimer, which is mostly just people in rooms talking. The same way I think for Toe, what he does for a lot of his movies, is that kind of a slow, considered, but always kind of gliding, moving camera, and then other sequences, which are more bravura in terms of the one takes and moving up and kind of POV or um, omniscient kind of over the top shots as well, and then kind of glide through scenes. He does have this kind of interesting, steady, controlled, but still roaming camera that I think adds a sense of momentum to his movies. That's kind of a first interesting flourish that he has. The second is that he's an excellent choreographer and he's an ex excellent blocker. Even in the still frames, he'll often have multiple people in different depths of, of field within a frame. He's interested in ensembles, almost always, always, there's never really a singular protagonist necessarily in some of his movies. It's always a protagonist as a part of a team or at the very least some sort of two-hander. And he's, as a result, interested in kind of multiple people in a space. So he has great blocking. He has also great uh, choreography, mostly in terms of uh, action sequences. So it's not just people shooting at others. They're ducking, they're hiding, the camera's moving over, they're kind of shooting through places. They're always an interesting uh, aspect of levels to his um, action scenes, whether someone's at the bottom of a hill or top or in an apartment or shooting down, there is this kind of interesting um, level aspect to a lot of his, his action scenes. So he's a great kind of filmmaker that is able to almost dance with his movies, which is why his action sequences are so great, because he's great with choreography, he's great with people within the frame, but then like I mentioned earlier, that camera's always moving. So there is this kind of rhythm to a lot of his movies where it's just impressive to see someone enter the frame, then shoot someone, then move out of the frame, and the camera's still kind of having this continual pushing forward, let's say, and moving left and right, and there's this kind of great dance-like sequence throughout all his movies. Um, and then, the, I guess the third last thing I want to talk about in terms of what makes him interesting and special is I do think he has an intense, intense kind of attention to detail and realism to his movies. It's not super stylistic un until it is. I mean, usually in the second half of his uh, movies, they become a little bit more stylistic, but for the first part, they're almost always uh, realistic. Uh, that's why I actually like a lot of his crime movies, because I think he uses that kind of cumulative research throughout all of his movies, so that um, there's just an interest factor in that as well. In, in the same way we see international movies, we don't know necessarily about the actors or about the culture, and then part of it is learning about that and being curious about that. So I've seen plenty of you know Italian mob movies, but seeing a, a Chinese mob movie and the triad and the history and the respect and the, the, the values, I don't know how realistic it necessarily is, but the, at least I can say that it feels realistic and feels um, true. And I think just the way that characters speak and the way to cast actors feels almost like a documentary when you're watching a movie like The Mission or Election. It feels like a true documentary. These are real people because of that kind of attention to detail. So there's always, there's always in Toe's movies, I think you'd find as well, just an interest in, oh, let me figure out this world and who these people are and kind of ingratiating us into that factor too. So if I were to compare him to any kind of Western filmmaker, the first one that would come to mind would be like Michael Mann because of that attention to detail and that realism and that kind of research but also maybe a little bit of a stylization of like a Tony Scott. I think of this movie that we're covering today, Exile, to be similar to like Tony Scott's Man on Fire in that it's an emotional action movie as well. Um, but speaking about that, actually now transitioning into my discussion of the film, the movie is about a group of four men who try to protect their exiled boss from being killed by the new mob boss. And it's a story about friendship, about loyalty, about brotherhood, 
all combined in this kind of Western style action. Um, even just from that opening scene that we get, there's a d intense kind of um, appreciation and almost homage to the Western genre. All of the acting styles from the great ensemble, in particular the four men, have this kind of stoic cowboy archetype. If you see how Toe shoots the movie, he's almost always shooting it from low angles, making these men seem like these kind of larger than life heroic figures. Uh, but then also, unlike some of his other movies, there is a, a slow tension to the scenes so that the scenes really build before they kind of explode in action. I'm thinking of the scene, if, you, if you've seen the movie, like uh, when they go to the underground doctor and there's kind of that sense of dramatic irony going on and you're waiting, you're waiting for that tension to build. Even in that opening scene, we're kind of thrust into unsure of who the relationship is and why people are there to, to find someone. And there is this kind of uh, slow tension that Toe is really excellent at building here in, in this movie. But I teased it earlier, and I really do think Exiled is great because of kind of the emotions that it's interested in. Yes, you have great fight choreography and those multiple levels in particular, great color grading. It's also Western, great tension, stoic acting, all that fun stuff. But what I think I wanted to cover it was because it's kind of representative of Toe's career. Because Toe has, you know, got the you know, great action sequences and a breaking news or a brotherly kind of loyalty in the throwdown or really entertaining in something like drug war. And this movie kind of combines that all together. But what it also has that those movies don't necessarily always have is that emotional factor. And that was what really kind of hit me when watching the movie, which is how much it was interested in the kind of idea of loyalty and brotherhood and, and growing up with some people and what you would do um, and, and what you would sacrifice for that. So what Toad does to really emphasize these these moments are the the scenes that you don't need. There's a lot of scenes that you kind of don't need in the movie uh, where we have scenes that happen essentially right after the action sequences or right before it or these small moments of them just waiting in the car where you have these kind of more in-depth conversations where we have the action scene, it's great, it's cool, it's interesting, but we understand the stakes because right after the action scene, we don't cut away to them planning for the next one or them in the safe house. We get, you know, a scene of them kind of yelling at each other because what it was supposed to be someone else that got shot instead of the man that they got. We see the kind of brutality of the action and the results of them bandaging them, themselves up. We get the kind of late night talks reminiscing about kind of old memories in, in the beginning of the movie so we understand the relationship and kind of get an understanding of who these men are and it's an emotional movie that is not interested in the interior lives of its characters and that's actually fine because what the movie is interested in is the relationship between each other and i think that's important when you think of ensemble movies great ensemble movies like the works of wes anderson or even something like the big chill came to mind when watching this movie, is you only have two hours, so you can't necessarily get into the backstory of every single character because it's an ensemble. If it's a you know movie like Taxi Driver, you can get into the head and the history of a singular character and spend a lot of time with that one character because you have two hours. But when you have an ensemble, you just don't have enough time to spend understanding the dichotomies and the background of each individual character. What you are interested in an ensemble movie is the relationship between the characters. So that's what's interesting in this movie. We don't get the details as to necessarily where they grew up or why one person rose the ranks over someone else, why this guy that started with them is the boss and these guys are the henchmen. We don't really understand that and we're not interested in that. What we are interested in is the relationship with each other and some of that interesting power dynamics that he's now an exiled mob boss. So they're doing him a favor, but he's still also the mob boss. So there is kind of a power dynamic, but then of course they've also started the gang together, which is why you and these four um, uh, guys are protecting this exiled mob boss. So there is this interesting power dynamic of loyalty, of past, of what you have to do for friends for your past and how far you will go and, and sacrifice and what that necessarily means, even though we know someone is exiled, how long will you stand beside them and those kind of emotional, stoic, manly relationships I think Toe is interested in throughout his entire career, but in particular, is, in particular with this movie, is fascinated in as well. So if you're looking for a kick-ass crime movie with great action choreography, which is also secretly, you know, a once upon a time in the West type of a movie, 
definitely check out Exiled, but the special part about it, and I think on even multiple rewatches, which you'll find and really connect to and want, want you to come back over and over again, is that kind of stoic, very manly, brotherly um, loyalty and examination of what you would do for old friends. It's an awesome movie and a, another great example that when it comes to Asian cinema, there is more than Kurosawa. But that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you comment below. Let me know your thoughts on this movie, if you've seen the movies of Johnny Toe. And we've still got a few more weeks left of this series. If you want me to cover any other filmmakers, uh, we haven't really gotten any suggestions so far, but I'm definitely open to that. Like I mentioned, you still want to keep them relatively obscure, but uh, we're still kind of, you know, got a couple slots open near the end of the season that I still have to figure out who I want to cover. So any suggestions, feel free to comment down below. But that's about it. Until next time, stay tuned.